Hey, Armand here with your astrology forecast for the week of July 11th, 2021. It's a good week. It's a good week. It's a productive week. We have a lot of that Neptunian, mercurial, retrograde energy behind us. It's a, we're waxing out of Friday, Saturday's new moon in Cancer. It's a time to get stuff going. We're working up to the first quarter moon at the end of the week. Always an active time. So the basic strategy this week is to get things in place early in the week, begin to move things, I'd say right around Tuesday, Wednesday, and then big active types of changes have to happen more or less Friday, Saturday even, if you're dealing with something that can be dealt with on Friday, Saturday. Even Thursday's good. So there's the basic plan. Before we go any further, I do want to give a shout out to Adam Bernstein over at the Medium channel. He has had some really extraordinary forecasts lately, and uh, it's always it's always enjoyable to watch anyway. And I also want to give a shout out again to Integrated Minds, my other channel here on YouTube. I, I mean, I, I assume you would have checked it out, right? Because you don't want to miss out. I don't want you to miss out. That's the thing. Also, like and subscribe if you can. And watch the whole video go all the way through. I'm really on it with YouTube. Now, I didn't mind them putting commercials in front of my videos. I mean, it's free to me to use the, their service. So, I mean, you know, they want to put a commercial before it. That's fine. But, you know, this week I was watching. And you know who came up? Another astrologer. I mean, that's cold. That's cold. Another astrologer's stuff comes up advertising her services on my channel. It's not her fault. That's a little cold. So now I wanna now I wanna get to that watch time that I can uh, start to get a little kickback for myself. It's just a matter of principle. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll amount to like fifty cents a week or something like that. But hey, you know, I'll take it. Okay, enough of that. Now let's talk about this week coming. The big highlight of the early part of the week is the Mars. Venus conjunction in Leo, which is exact on Tuesday, and that is exact on Tuesday at 9.32 in the morning, which means that we feel it mostly Sunday and Monday. And so, you know, because by the time we get to Tuesday morning, it's exact. And then after that, it sort of starts to fade away in terms of its strength. It does get heated up a couple of times during the week by the moon. So it's not like it's over and done. But, you know, you want to catch this energy early in the week. Mars and Venus conjunct in Leo. That has a sort of passionate kind of energy, dramatic, romantic. It's really good also, too, for any kind of creative project. It's fairly good for any sort of business uh, adventure type of thing as well. Here's an interesting thing. You know, even in a good week, the universe sends us these little hiccups. Um, not bad stuff by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I think... Really, it's, I was thinking about sort of being kind of playful, if you if you really think about it. It's like it's like a puzzle that you have to solve. That's what I'm seeing here. So one thing is that the moon is void virtually all day Monday. So we have the moon in Leo, but it's void. So the moon is like sort of helping out this aspect. Very, very helpful on Sunday. But then... then the moon goes void, and Monday, we don't have quite that starter energy. Terrific, though, if you already have plans. Terrific. Absolutely terrific on Monday. And it gives you a little bit of freedom, too, that void, of course, energy of, like, you don't really have to push too hard. You shouldn't push too hard. right? So you can just sort of let that Leo moon coast you through Monday. Another cosmic joke on us is that this wonderful, hot, beautiful aspect is exact on Tuesday, you know, and also the moon will go into Virgo on Tuesday, which is, you know, a little bit, a little bit less fiery by any stretch of the imagination than Leo. It's not fiery at all. It's a nice sign, but it's not very fiery. So, um, if you can make plans, make plans early, make plans maybe on Sunday, Monday is fine to implement them, just but you know it's just it's an enjoyable let things flow type of thing. Tuesday, you might actually have a little bit more of a work vibe. Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday, which is great. Take this energy and channel it into some kind of a project, creative project, work project, whatever you want. You know, the Moon in Virgo helps us to focus with precision, 
although, you know, the moon in Virgo is opposite Neptune, and so it pulls out a little bit of, uh, it fogs us out a little bit in the midst of our precision. One interesting thing that can happen with the moon in Virgo opposite Neptune is not so much that we lose our focus so much as that we channel our focus too much. It's the you can't see the forest for the trees kind of thing. You know, you, you sort of lose the big picture because you become obsessed with the detail. You get that Neptunian obsession with the detail. You know, the little thing becomes the whole thing. So don't make mountains out of molehills or anything like that. Another aspect that is... Uh, uh, strong on Monday is uh, Mercury trying Jupiter. Great for getting your message across. Great for, but again, there you've got that whole issue of, well, great Mercury is in in Mercury in Cancer is trying Jupiter in Pisces. Very good for getting uh, emotional messages out there, but not so great with the moon void. It's not a great time to sort of initiate something, but you can, but it, it's a helpful energy as well. So, uh, the sun does try Neptune on the 15th, which is Thursday. And I, I feel that with all that Neptunian energy that sort of fogged us out late May through June, even into last week with the Mercury Neptune square, this is a little bit more of a steadying kind of energy. This is a little bit more of a productive use of the Neptunian energy. Not that Neptunian energy is ever really that productive in a Saturnian sense, but it gives you a little bit of the ability to maybe translate some of those ideas. You know, over the course of the last month, and like last week even, you know, we could get really inspired. We could have great ideas. We could really recognize what's a great thing to do, but have a lot of trouble gaining any traction to make it happen. You know, it's the sort of like treading water feeling, it's not really making a lot of progress. And, you know, overblown, you could see too much in an idea, or it's a great vision, but how do you make it real? Well, this week is really good for making things real. You know, it may not be the exact same thing as the vision that you had in originally, but it should be pretty workable. You know, you can find some way to at least get it on track. You know, it's going to, things take a while to get moving, but at least get things on track. If you had an idea last uh, week with the moon, the new moon in Cancer for home improvement projects and so on, as long as you're not ordering appliances and have to wait till December to get them, is, is, it's the good time to at least start moving on those types of things. Anything to do, maybe by buying a new home or something like that would be another thing, or selling your home or something. Some of those cancerian types of things. Maybe, and the Virgo moon at midweek will help this, maybe things like, you know, starting to cook healthy meals and, and do some, uh, uh, you know, let's say, get, you know, you know, premium ingredients and just generally speaking, you know, start a good healthy diet plan or something like that. Good time for that. Not so much a, like a reduction, like a lose weight program. That's better with the moon waning rather than waxing. But beginning a whole new cooking kind of regimen type of thing would be a really good idea at this time. Anyways, so that's what we have uh, at going up until about Friday, Saturday, when we run into the... First quarter moon, which is quite strong. They're both actually exact on Saturday. And the uh, opposition of the sun to Pluto. Now, the first quarter moon is always active. This one is in Libra. Um, it, the basics of it are that whatever plan you have, this is the time for the major action. This is the time, like, you know, if you were going to open up a business, say, just to be a little bit out there. If you're going to open up a business, you'd want to do it right with, you know, the first quarter moon. It's the time of direct action. Before that, you're doing prep work. You're making contacts. You're doing everything else. But that real, like, throw the doors open type of thing, you want to do that right around the first quarter moon. So right towards the end of the week, the beginning of the weekend. Then the sun opposite Pluto. Sun-Pluto oppositions or Sun-Pluto aspects are always fascinating because the Sun, it's the, you know, it, it's the center, it's the reason for being. And then Pluto is kind of the power broker. So an analogy for the Sun opposite Pluto would be 
the son in cancer, let's say the king or the queen, right, royalty, the son, wants to build a new castle or, you know, <laughs> make improvements on the castle. But they need financing for this. And so for that, they got to go to go Pluto in Capricorn. So, you know, who's who's got the power? Well, Pluto has got the money, has got the sort of practical wherewithal to make things happen. And yet the sun, right, this is the center of things. That's, that's the sense of meaning, the sense of vitality. So without Pluto, the sun may not be able to do what needs to be done. But without the sun, there's no point to the, there's no point to any of the rest of it. It's an interesting little seesaw there, right? You know, it, it's the it's the sense of meaning, and then the sense of direct power. How's this going to play out in our lives? Well, uh, I could certainly see it as being a kind. Of, there's a little potential for conflict in this for sure. Um, the sense may be, some folks some folks may sense that they are being controlled. They may sense that their, um, you know, th that their freedom is constricted by somebody, probably by somebody or some circumstance. It's that push in on you kind of thing that causes a little bit of anxiety. Um, but I would also say that with the moon in Libra, there's a real good opportunity to broker things. There's a, there's an opportunity to make agreements. There's an opportunity to look at both sides and come to some kind of a compromise. Certainly the end of the week would have a little bit of tension around, you know, at work, you're going to feel a little bit of tension if, uh, if there's, if, you know, not everybody will, but if there's some conflict, you, it'll, it'll perk up towards the end of the week. Probably not a great time to ask for, let's say, your vacation time, although if you can make a good argument for it, go right ahead. Uh, in our personal lives, not so much. You know what this is going to be really interesting to see will be what happens uh, with uh, President Biden and Congress uh, as he's put in uh, new uh, proposals for new packages and so on. And that's, ve that's very much this kind of back and forth type of thing. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that on the weekend. Anyways, um, I think it's a really good week. It's a very active week. Uh, you have potential for fun, you've got potential for doing stuff that needs to get done. Stop watching YouTube. <laughs>